I want to take a moment and share with you about the life of a man who lived uh, about 1,700 years ago. And uh, he was born into a Christian family. It was a rich Christian family. And he quickly discovered in his heart that he had a gift of hospitality and a gift also of generosity. And Amy, as, even as Amy is talking about, this young man began to see the needs around him. But he didn't want people to know who he was. He was kind of shy. And he didn't want people to know when he helped them. Uh, this man uh, actually was in his later years, like when he was about 50 years old, he was one of the 300 Christian leaders that was in Nicaea for the Nicaean Council. And he was one of the 300 leaders to sign uh, this document, the Nicene Creed. I have some of it right here for me. This is one of the absolute bedrock creeds of Christendom, and it starts out like this. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. And it goes on. But I wanted to encourage you that this man was so filled with the zeal of God and when he was in his middle, like, 30s, he met a man who was a Christian businessman, but he lost everything. He lost everything through a series of bad, unfortunate events that he could not control. And this particular man I'm talking about today, he found out that this father, this businessman who was also a dad, had three daughters. And because he'd lost all of his resources, all of his fortune, and the creditors were coming to take what he had, the creditor actually came and said, I'm going to take your daughters and I'm going to sell them into prostitution. And this man, he clothed himself and he put on a cloak and he snuck over to this destitute father's house that was desperate and he climbed up on a ladder and he threw some coins some gold coins that were in a bag through the window. And he did not just, not just once, but each day he came back and he put more coins in through the window. This is a true story. And what happened was, is the father did not know who it was and he stayed up on the third time and he found out that it was none other than St. Nicholas. Yes, St. Nicholas is a real person, lived about 1,700 years ago. And he had a heart of compassion. And he had a heart of generosity. And he had a heart of hospitality. And he saw these, these needs like this. And he wanted to be a part of meeting them. And because he had the means to do so, because he came from a rich home, he was able to give generously. We don't know if he ever got married or not. There's a lot of myth uh, that went along with this legend over time. It's hard to know all that's real and what isn't. But I'll tell you that one story is definitely true. Another story that is most likely true is that he went to visit the Holy Land. A lot of the saints of that time did. And when he came back, there was a ferocious, terrible storm. And he stood on the bow of his ship with scared sailors. And you know when sailors are scared, you know that's time for you, if you're on the boat, to start getting scared. And basically, he rebuked the, the storm. He calmed the winds and the sea. And all of the sailors were simply amazed. Went back into harbor and his story became widespread and he became the patron saint of sailors. He also became the patron saint of single people. <laughs> he became the patron saint of those who were oppressed and those who were marginalized. And as a matter of fact, in the Greek Orthodox Church, and my aunt was Greek Orthodox, that Saint Nicholas is one of the most highest esteemed saints so he wasn't just a legend. He wasn't just a myth. He was a real person. He was more than a myth. He was a man. And he was a man that had a heart of generosity. And of course, the stories we have today of Santa Claus have perpetuated down through time, but they do go back to an original person. I want to leave a legacy. I want it to be said of me that I was looking around, 
that I was looking for needs, that I was scanning the horizon, searching the landscape, looking for those who needed help. And I somehow helped meet that name. And I pray that all of us in our heart can carry Christmas in our heart in many ways, but one of those is this, that we would have a heart of hospitality and a heart of generosity to help those who are less fortunate, to those who are hurting, to those that are broken, to those that are about ready to, to, to have something very bad happen to them, we come in and save the day. I want to encourage you, Christian, that you might not have a lot of resources, but you've got something. And if you'll offer it up to God, he can multiply it and make it something awesome. Would you pray with me today? God, thank you for a heart of generosity and a heart of hospitality. Thank you for the true story of St. Nicholas. And I pray that we would carry Christmas in the same way, not just during this Christmas time, but all year long. We would be scanning the horizon, looking for those that need help, and that we would bring them not just a service or a good, but we would bring them the very love of Christ in a practical way. God, I pray, I pray over every person in our church, every guest, everybody that's participating in this live stream, that you would open up their heart, not just to receive great things from you, but to be able to give from all that you've given to them. God, I pray for those that are um, right now underemployed or unemployed, that you would bless them, that you'd provide for them as they head into the new year, that you'd open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing on them they would not be able to contain. Father, I pray you'd help those right now that are participating, that are going through financial hard times. Encourage them, strengthen them, be with them, provide for them. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. We thank you for giving and being a part of our church. We are doing so much. I want you to know, just tonight, as Kenny was saying, we're going to have a drive-through Christmas experience you're not going to want to miss. We've got literally 20, 25,000 lights all around our building, and it's going to be lit up like a Christmas tree, literally, <laughs> uh, this, this evening from 5 to 8. And I've got good news for you is that if you're not able to make it or you know someone that can't make it tonight from 5 to 8, we're going to stay open tomorrow. We won't be able to give out gifts, but we're going to stay open from 5 to 8 tomorrow so people can come through and enjoy the music. We have an FM transmitter, and we're going to be playing music, Christmas songs as people are driving around, and tomorrow you can come too from 5 to 8. Spread the word T tomorrow as well, 5 to 8. And uh, thank you, but we're giving so many different ways. We're giving to church plants every single week that are happening around the world in every nation. So I want you to know that this is good ground. This is good soil for you to give to here at Every Nation City Church. Thank you so much for your giving. You can give lots of different ways. You can use our Push Pay app, and all you've got to do is text EN City Church to the number 77. 977. You can also give online, everynationcitychurch.com. Again, thank you so much for giving.